Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the monthly meeting of the Cobb County Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, and as is our, today is a very special day. Today is Veterans Day, and as is our custom, uh, at this time I'm going to ask everybody to rise. And Skip Gunther, who is a veteran of uh, Vietnam and uh, the military, is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd all please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Today is Veterans Day, and we do salute all the uh, uh, both active and inactive and retired military personnel and also our public service in, in the Cobb County uh, uh, area. Uh, for those of you that are here for the first time, I'm going to give you a little insight on how we're going to conduct the meeting today. The first thing that we will concern ourselves with is the consent agenda. These applications have not only been reviewed by this board, but our professional and our engineering staff and also our zoning staff. To our knowledge, there's no known opposition in any of these particular cases. So the way we will go forward is Mr. Peterson, our head zoning administrator, will read these into the record. The applicant, he or she, will identify themselves by raising their hand. And likewise, if there is anybody here in opposition, if they would identify themselves by raising their hand, and if we do have any opposition, we will pull that particular case and hear it in its regular numeric order. Once we complete that, we have, uh, we'll go into our regular uh, session. We only have one case that is scheduled to be heard today. The process will go forward with the same way that Mr. Peterson will read these into the record. Again, the applicant will identify themselves. And those of you that are going to give testimony today, our officer of the day is Ms. Kim Wakefield. We'll call you forward. You'll be sworn in. And then, it, then our procedure is the applicant will have a 10-minute period to make a presentation to this board. Likewise, and collectively, those in opposition will have a 10-minute period to make their opposition known to the board. All testimony will be given to the, uh, uh, to the podium at my right. And that should complete our business for the day. And Mr. Peterson, do you have any special announcements that you need to make now? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have a few announcements to make before we start the hearing. There are three uh, cases on today's agenda which have been continued by the staff uh, or the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals will not be heard today. First case is variance case V82, Philip Wallace. That case was continued by the Board of Zoning Appeals will not be heard until the December 9th, 2015 variance hearing. Variance case V140, EZ69RH, Windy Hill, LLC. The case was continued by the staff until the, the December 9, 2015 Board of Zoning Appeals variance hearing, so that case will not be heard today. And lastly, variance case V160 FC Winder LLC. That case was continued by the staff until the December 9, 2015 Board of Zoning Appeals variance hearing, so that case will not be heard today. I would like to ask the people in today's audience to please turn your cell phones off. The ringing does interfere with the broadcast and presentations. So if you have a cell phone, please turn it off. And I have one announcement to make concerning three cases on today's agenda. The following announcement concerns variance applications requesting a reduction in lot size or a reduction in road frontage relating to the official code of Cobb County, Georgia, Chapter 134, adopted by the Board of Commissioners on July 28, 2015. Applicants are advised that variance applications requesting a reduction in lot size or public road frontage, which are approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals, takes the form of a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, the Board of Commissioners makes the final determination whether to grant the special exception for the requested lot size reduction or rule for under reduction. There are three cases on today's agenda which this rule applies. First case is variance case V136, Michael and Lorraine Thibodeau. Variance case V150, AJ North American LLC. And variance case V159, JDH Developers. The applicants and or representatives are instructed that the Board of Zoning Appeals approves uh, these variance applications that a representative would need to be present at the Board of Commissioners zoning hearing on Tuesday, December 15th, 2015 at 9 o'clock for a final determination. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to start the consent agenda. Let's jump right in, John. Thank you, sir. Cobb County variance, uh, excuse me, Cobb County Board of Zoning Appeals variance <coughs> hearing. 
consent agenda for November 11th, 2015. Variance case V136, Michael and Lorraine Thibodeau request a variance to waive the public road frontage from required 75 feet to 50 feet, to waive the minimum lot width and front setback from required 75 feet to 50 feet, and to waive the front setback from required 40 feet to 35 feet in land lot 279 of the 20th district. The property is located on the east side of Gordon Combs Road, north of Burnt Hickory Road. Staff recommends approval, subject to sewer comments and fire department comments. Is the applicant present? Yes. That direction of the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V136? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V149, Ehud and Susan Sandalon request a variance to waive the maximum allowable impervious surface from 35% to 40% in land lot 7 of the 1st District. The property is located on the north side of Conmare Drive across from Exmoor Drive. Staff recommends approval subject to Stormwater Management Division comments. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V149? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V150, AJ North America, LLC. Request a variance to waive the rear setback from required 30 and 40 feet to zero feet adjacent to the western property line. Reduce the minimum number of required parking spaces from 21 to 14 spaces for the proposed administration building and waive the minimum public road frontage from required 50 feet to zero feet in land lots 909, 910, 941, and 942 of the 19th district. The property is located on the west side of Industry Road, south of Flint Hill Road. Staff recommends approval, subject to site plan review comments. Is the applicant present? That director show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variant case V150? Let director show there's no one opposed. Variance case V151, Henry R. Vitelli, Jr. and Anita M. Vitelli request a variance to waive the side setback for an accessory structure over 650 square feet for a proposed approximately 2,288 square foot shop uh, and garage required 100 feet to 18 feet adjacent to the southern property line and land lot 339 of the 20th district. The property is located at the western terminus of Breckenridge Point west of Mars Hill Road. Staff recommends approval subject to the following conditions. Stormwater Management Division comments, sewer comments, and no commercial or residential use of the accessory building. Is the applicant present? A director show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V151? Let the director show there's no one opposed. Variance case V152, Southland Homes. Request a variance the way of the front setback from required 35 feet to 30 feet in land lot 50 of the 19th district. The property is located on the south side of Gray Coat Bluff, south of Old Dallas Road. Staff recommends approval, subject to the site plan review comments, and for the encroachments as shown on the site plan received by the zoning division on September 8, 2015. Is the applicant present? Yes. The director of the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V152? All right, we have one in opposition. Is it your desire to have this curse, uh, case heard publicly? Do you, the question is, do you want to have the case heard publicly, or is there any discussion that you would like to have with the applicant outside? Okay, we'll just, we'll, we'll read the other cases. If, if the applicant and that gentleman would go out in the hallway and have a discussion and come back in and just tell us at that time if you want the case heard, we'll be happy to hear it. Okay, well, we'll, we'll still let them discuss that and then come back yet. So we'll, we'll just skip over that one, John, and we'll come back to it. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Variance case <clears throat> B-154, Iberia Bank, request a variance to allow a sign to be placed more than 24 inches from the building surface on which it is attached in Landlot 1013 of the 17th District. The property is located on the west side of Cumberland Boulevard, south of Acres Mill Road, and east of Interstate 75. Staff recommends approval subject to the sign rendering labeled as exhibit containing the variance analysis. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V154? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V155, Matt Kiger requests a variance to allow an accessory structure 
a proposed ATM machine to be to the front of the primary structure in land lot 720 of the 16th district. The property is located at the southeast corner of Home Center Drive <coughs> and Ernest Barrett Parkway. Staff recommends approval subject to the site plan received by the zoning division on September 1st, 2015 with the district commissioner approving the final ATM location. Sewer comments, color and materials to match the existing building and ensure that proper lighting uh, is there for nighttime use. Is the applicant present? Let direct show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V-155? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V-156, Security Vault Works, LLC, and my, Matt, uh, Matthew Kiger request a variance to allow an accessory structure, a proposed ATM machine to be to the front of the primary structure, and land lot 919, 920, 941, and 942 of the 17th District. The property is located on the south side of Windy Hill Road and on the east side of Interstate North Parkway and on the north side of Interstate North Parkway East and on the west side of Powers Ferry Road. Staff recommends approval subject to the site plan received by the, zo the zoning division on September 10th, 2015 with the district commissioner approving minor modifications. The applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V-156? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case of V-157, Meadows and Ole LLC request a variance to we have the maximum building height from 52 feet to 66 feet in land lot 748 of the 17th district. The property is located on the east side of Atlanta Road, south of Cumberland Parkway, and on the west side of Winchester Parkway. Staff recommends approval of the variance subject to sewer comments, traffic comments, and as shown on the rendering received by the zoning division on September 10th, 2015. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V-157? Okay, again, is it your desire to have the case heard? Okay, if you'd like to go out in the vestibule and come back in, we'll suspend 157. Okay. And we'll go to 158. Yes, sir. Variance case V-158, Sherry S. Holder. Request a variance to waive the maximum allowable impervious surface from 35% to 50% in land lot 604 of the 16th district. The property is located on the south side of Page Heights Court, east of, east of Henry Road. Staff recommends approval subject to stormwater management division comments. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V-158? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V-159, JDH developers <coughs> request a variance to waive the minimum public road frontage from required 50 feet to 40 feet <coughs> for track one and to 39 feet for track two, I mean, excuse me, for track three. Waive the minimum uh, lot width of the front setback from required 75 feet to 55 feet for track three. Waive the front setback uh, for track one from required 40 feet to 25 feet. Waive the rear setback for track one from required 30 feet to 25 feet and waive the rear setback for track two from required 30 feet to 25 feet in land lots 651 and 718 of the 16th district. The property is located at the southern terminus of Cobb Place Boulevard, at the northern terminus of Greer's Chapel Drive, and west of Interstate 75. The applicant's representative is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V-159? Let the record show there's no one opposed. And the staff recommends approval of the variance subject to traffic comments, storm warning management division comments, and site plan review comments. Variance case V-161, Don Petrie, requests a variance to waive the setbacks for an accessory structure over 650 square feet for a proposed 1,040 square foot garage required 100 feet to 55 feet to the rear, 29 feet adjacent to the eastern property line, and 37 feet adjacent to the western property line. We have the side setback for the house from required 10 feet to 9 feet adjacent to the eastern property line and allow an additional electric meter on a residential lot in land lot 144 of the 20th district. The property is located on the north side of Stonewall Drive south of Memorial Parkway. Staff recommends approval subject to no commercial or residential use of the building. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V-161? Let the record show there's no one opposed. 
Variance case V162, Apollo sign and light. Request a variance to waive the maximum allowable wall sign area of 115.83 square feet to 201.98 square feet in land lot 505 and 506 of the 16th district. The property is located on the east side of Barrett Lakes Boulevard, south of Big Shanty Road, uh, and west of Interstate uh, 75. Staff recommends approval of the variant subject to the sign rendering labeled as exhibit containing the variance analysis. Is the applicant present? The director of the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to the variance case V162? That director says there's no one opposed, and that completes the consent agenda, Mr. Chairman of the Board. Okay, it's back to this board for discussion with the exception of 152 and 157. Is there any comments, questions, or Recommendations, not hearing any, I'll entertain a motion then. Make a motion that we um, approve the consent agenda as presented. Okay. I'll second that. And I have a second. No other comments, no other discussion. Call for the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye, aye. Any opposed? Madam Secretary, that count, that's, uh, uh, that is approved with a four to zero vote. So with that said, John, and they're still in discussion, we'll just hold those people in abeyance. Let's go to our regular case of 153. 142 has been continued. 142. John? The, the applicant for 152 is coming back in. Do you want to hear from them real well, quick? I'd rather, uh, how about 157? Are they still out? They're, they're, they're still out there. All right, well, let's go to 152 then. <clears throat> All right, you've had an opportunity to have discussion. Are you ready to call yes. call the case? And, and oh, okay. We'll just have well, a hearing let's, on it. Let's then. call the case. We'll call the case 152. Okay. Uh -huh. No, no, stay, just stay right there for a second. Variance case V152, Southland Homes. Request a variance to waive the front setback. Required 35 feet to 30 feet. And land lot 50 of the 19th district. The property is located on the south side of Gray Coat Bluff, south of Old Dallas Road. The applicant is present. Earlier, there's one person here in opposition. All those wishing to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in. Everybody that's going to give testimony, come and be sworn in. Good afternoon. All right, sir. Give us your name, please, before My you My name start. is Randy Matheny. Okay, Randy, go ahead and tell us what you want. Okay, we're requesting a variance uh, for the property on 374 Gray Bluff, I mean, Gray Coat Bluff. Uh, what had happened, uh, we had a little mistake in the measuring, and I had discussed this with uh, Mr. Gunther, uh, with the surveys that we got on the foundation surveys, and then when it was redone to the proper manner we had a small mistake in it a five foot on the corner of the garage and the set into the setback uh i work for or i'm representing southland homes and southland homes is a home builder that's been around since 1984 and uh, they build approximately 50 homes a year and we've i've been representing them for six years and i've never had this problem before and it is just one of those flukes one of those mistakes that happens, and we're asking for a variance to allow the owners to live. They're already living in their house, already have their CO, and we're trying to get from the construction loan <coughs> into the regular loan that they have. And when the survey come from the bank, that's when we caught this mistake. This was not something that we was aware of, and I talked to Donald over in uh, zoning, and he says, Ooh, that's not good because we didn't catch it either. It was just one of those things that just passed through us. And uh, uh, we're asking for this variance for this property. All right, anything else you want to tell us? You have a little time. Has, has the survey been corrected? Or are we on good ground now or what? Yes, sir. The only thing is is that the, the corner of the garage mm -hmm. is five foot into the 35-foot setback. And uh, we're asking to you to to uh, everything else is just right, uh, no other problems. Okay, anything else you want to say? 
Uh, no, sir, I can't think of anything else. All right, if you would, just have a seat. And yes. this time we'll hear from the uh, gentleman that's in opposition. Sir, if you would, start by giving us your name, please, first. Yes, my name is Vincent Nguyen. Okay. I'm representing from my brother, uh, Mark Nguyen. He's um, in military. He's active. Yes. So he's um, cannot make it here today. So he asked me to um, come out uh, okay. for the meeting to get him information of, of the owner information um, regarding of the, his neighbor, actually. So uh, we got it. We resolved. Um, we got the owner information. So uh, I'm satisfied, and I will <coughs> forward to him so they can work it out between uh, – because they're the neighbor. Okay. So yeah, are you satisfied with what the yes. the conversation was? Yes. So you're okay with that? I'm okay with that. Uh, Mr. Gunther represents the district. Skip, do you have any comment or questions or anything real quick? Uh, I'll just make a comment that um, – the uh with respect to the his your issue i believe your issue is your brother the driveway for the house that your brother owns yes uh encroaches on the property that we're dealing with on uh, 374 gray cope bluff yes and you're looking for an easement across that property yes. that's a i believe that's a that's uh, what he's he would that's like a civil to. issue that's yes. not a zoning issue yes. and we're here to deal with zoning issues and so yes. i i thank you for recognizing that it's not an issue for us to deal with no Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and make a motion. And get... Yeah. Okay. I, I think this is just a very simple case of uh, honest mistakes on the part of uh, the builder and ex you know, experienced builder and experienced uh, inspectors. I make a motion that uh, we approve uh, application uh, V152 uh, with all staff comments. Second. And I have a second. No other comments. Call for the vote. All in favor signify by saying aye, aye. Any opposed? That carries for approval four to zero. Thank you, brother, for his service, and we appreciate you coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, John, tell me where I am. What's, what's the next one you want to do? Yes, sir. Variance case V142. Okay. Michelle Taylor requests a variance to waive the, ex the exterior rear setback from required 40 feet to 24 feet, which is existing. Waive the side setback for an accessory structure under 144 square feet for an approximately 12 square foot uh, block shed number one required five feet to 0.8 feet adjacent to the west property line we have the side setback for an accessory structure under 650 square feet for a uh, 82 square foot block shed number two for required five feet to zero feet adjacent to the west property line we have the front setback for an accessory structure under 650 square feet or an 82 square foot block shed number two from required 20 feet to eight feet and allow an accessory structure uh, an approximately 12 square foot sh uh, block shed number one and 82 uh, square foot shed number two to be to the side or in front of the primary structure in land lot 868 of the 17th district the property is located at the northern terminus of hawk court east of black bear drive is the applicant present let the record show the applicant is here is there anyone here opposed to variance case of V142? Let the record show no one opposed. <coughs> Will the applicant please come forward to be sworn in? Okay, for the purpose of the record, if you would please give us your name, please, first. I'm Michelle Taylor. And I'm Theodore Lee. Okay, Mr. Taylor or Mr. Lee, or Miss Lee, Miss Taylor. Okay, Michelle, tell us what you want. Okay, uh, we understand that, and I'm sorry I wasn't more knowledgeable when I purchased my home, but I was not given full disclosure. There was no survey on my property when I bought it in 2004 so when we built these structures we didn't realize that we were on a sewer easement now we're okay with that we've you know we've gone through everything that we know um kim has been very helpful with all of this the thing that we need somebody to help us with though is in the corner 
of the front of the house, the right-hand corner, we have a deck across the front of the house that comes into a triangle that goes into a 10-foot drain easement. Tell you what, do we? Do you have a survey or anything you can put up to show us that? I have the survey here. In my hand. If you'd give it to that gentleman there, he okay. will put that up. Okay. Once he gets that on the screen, he's going to give you a microphone and a pointer, and you can point out <laughs> okay. what you're doing. Now, as he's doing that, my understanding, and I'm trying to help you a little bit here, my understanding is it's the Marietta Water Authority that you're involved with. They are not going to grant you any easement, so you know you're going to have to take the buildings down. Is that correct? Right. You understand We, we all have that. no problem with that part. Right. This corner structure that he's working to put up on the screen now is part of what we have had to start putting up over the years that I've been in that house. Uh, Mr. Lee is a renter and is in lieu of getting ready in the spring of next year to purchase the house. We have runoff that comes down behind the two houses to the right of my house. And my house has almost flooded out three times because the water comes down. There's nothing stopping the water. So the corner of this, are you ready? If you okay. get a microphone and a pointer, then you can show okay. us what we're looking at. Where this X, oh, where this X is, whoop, where am I at? Got a point right at the paper. No. I'm in the wrong spot. I'm over here. Okay. That X, that triangle right there, is over this 10-foot drainage easement. Yes, ma'am. Behind this deck is a 2-foot water retention wall to keep the water from coming down the hill. And I have pictures, but unfortunately, I didn't get them, print. I didn't get them done in time. We just did them before we came and didn't have time to get them printed. But there's a 25-foot drop on a hill. All the banking that they did up with the railroad ties has eroded. Everything's coming. All the water comes down the hill. In 2006, I think it was, Cobb County came out and said that they were going to do some kind of drainage on that side of my house. And I moved plants and things out of this area on the right side of the house. They never came back and did any kind of drainage because I think they realized that after these homes were built up on this hill, there was nothing to hold the water back. There was no proper drainage set up for these. So what I'd like to know is, instead of having to take all this down, can somebody come out and relook at this and let us know how we can make an adjustment because I think when the survey was done, they didn't know there was a two-foot retention wall behind that, that fencing, that deck. And where's they, the two, where, I'm confused, a little confused. Where's the two-foot retention wall? Right here behind this wall where this deck is built. And it's on the easement? It's built in the easement? Well, yeah, we've gone over the easement by the corner of this triangle. Who, who built that? Mr. Lee. You built the retention wall. I built everything in there. But, but, but it's on the easement. Well, but we didn't know that at the time. Um, I have experience with, I work for Fulton County and uh, construction, and we deal with a lot of easements things, and I didn't know. I was not aware, according to whatever plan that she had, was what I was going by in property lines. The existing owner on the other side, I built that little tiny uh, knee wall, okay, five feet off of the existing house. Right. Um, John, I'm going to need a little help with this. I understand what they've done, but, but we're not engineers. And again, it's the Marietta Water Authority. Yes. That's the easement that you need. Is it, or is it a Cobb County easement? Now that's, yeah, that's a drain easement. Wait, everybody's not, talking no. one time. I got to, okay. let me go to Mr. Peterson. Okay. John, you want to you want to talk, or you want to bring one of the engineers up? Uh, are we talking about the two sheds that are in for the variance, yeah. Mr. Chairman? We're no, what we're drainage. talking about is the is the retaining wall, is no. the deck. The, the, the drainage deck. easement is in favor of Cobb County. Okay. It's in Stormwater's comments. But David, you want to address that, or Tim wants to address that? Uh, David Braden, if you would please come up. David is our engineer with the water to, the water department. And let's get his comment. I 
Okay. You got David Braden with the Stormwater Management Division. The yeah, this is actually in Cobb County. This it's in this it's in the water and sewer service area for City of Marietta. Okay. But the, so the drainage easement is actually a uh, Cobb County. Cobb County. Easement. Okay. Good. It's not a it's not a pipe easement. It's just an open open flow easement. Um, and uh, but even as an open flow easement, we do not want to condone structures in in that easement because it's it's there to convey it's there to convey water and any deck and wall is not helping the situation. Now, if they want to put that turn that wall parallel with the easement then that's a different story but when i was out there the deck was not in place it was just columns in the ground so if they've completed that deck they've done it since the variance was placed uh, mr taylor um sir ha, ha, david hold on there yeah. ha, has that was is he corrected that no, that it wasn't built correct. i've i've been serving in the military for 19 years i'm still in the military okay and the reason why it's not finished because if i'm on active duty all the time well well yeah, um, but the question is did you do no. it it's, no. he's, he's false. It's he's not. Oh, it's un oh, it's no, unfinished. No. I said it was unfinished. That's right. That's it's right. the wall in front of the fence, in front of that corner of the deck. It goes turns for water flow that comes from the hill, which I they failed to fix, and it turns away from Michelle Taylor's house. Her house has flooded out. Her house is eight inches below grade, and I'm living in it now. She just got brand new floors in there this week, this year. And I'm the one, every time it rains out there, we're squeegee. And then they tell well, everybody, I, we got to sue everybody okay. for that. I, I understand all that. I, I'm still trying to get. Uh, so can I, can I ask, but, David. So is that survey correct? Where the wall is shown, or does it, does it curve around parallel to the house? It curves around. Oh, well, see, then the survey's not. Because I could not see it because it was hidden by the fence. It's like but a tree. If the, survey is, if the survey is incorrect, then what he said is, is different from what's shown in the plan. They didn't go behind probably when they did the survey. All right, let's do this, John. If, if there's a problem with the survey, we haven't had enough time to look at it. Maybe the thing to do, and Ms. Swanson, by the way, is ill. She could not be here today. She is more familiar with that. She runs that district. Maybe the thing to do with this is to, is to hold this case for 30 days to give Mr. Braden and maybe the water and sewer people, everybody an opportunity to look at that, get the survey together. Let's get out there and look at it and see what we can do. Is that acceptable to uh, my fellow members? Ms. Trombetti has a question. Um, that's not listed as a variance being requested, so does that need to be added? If, if they end up wanting to put something in the drainage easement, does that need to be added? No, that, that can't be cured with a variance because the, the easement is to Cobb County. Okay. So, okay. That's can I ask David a question? I think holding is a good idea. Okay. Can I ask Dave Braden a question? Is, is that easement defined, or is it a ditch or a pipe, or is it just undefined? There's no defined. It's defined on the plat, on the subdivision plat, and the and the survey. But know. on the ground, is there something actually there? No, there's not. There's, like I said, it's not. A, it's not a pipe, and there's not a well-defined channel either. Okay, I think there's enough confusion here that we will hold this case for 30 days until our next scheduled meeting. Do I, I'll make that as a motion. Do I have a second? Second, Mr. Gunther. Okay, no, quite all in favor signify by saying aye, aye. Any opposed? We're going to hold this case, uh, case 142, for 30 days until our next scheduled meeting. Uh, again, get Mr. Braden's card before you go, and we'll get everybody together, and we'll try to work this out. <laughs> but do realize, and I want you to realize, the overall picture is all those all those other garages That's and sheds have that. to be taken out. We got okay. that under control. Very good. Have a nice Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank Take care. You, don't don't fall down. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Help me, John. Where am I? Can I call the applicant back up here uh, for V-157 and see if they've come to an agreement with the opposition? Let's hear about that. Mary Rose, is still your desire to have this case heard publicly? Uh, just yes or no? No. No? As long as the, the question is, do you want the case heard publicly? No. Okay. Then do you have an amendment or anything you want to make a statement on, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, we have agreed with Mrs. Barnes to uh, agreed Mrs. Barnes to comply with all staff comments and to make the lighting on the site such that it does not shine toward the adjacent neighborhood. Okay. Sir, if you would, for the record, tell us who you are. My name is Joe Young. I'm a principal at Meadows and Ole LLC. Okay. 
All right, Mr. Peterson, how can we handle that? Can we just add that to the record? Yeah, and the one question I have is, is what neighborhood is it we're talking about exactly? This is the John Whelan neighborhood. Is, oh, the, the, one, the one across the street? Well, that's across 285, isn't it? No, it's not. Across Cumberland Boulevard. Okay, the gate is old, old Ivy? Okay. Can we just add, Mr. Chairman, that... Okay. That the lighting be uh, environmentally sensitive for the gates at Woodlaw, the gates at Old Ivy. Is that right? Okay. So if that's okay, I'll just read this back into the record with that in there. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Variance case V157, Meadows and Oli uh, LLC requested variance to have the maximum building height from 52 feet to 66 feet in land lot 748 of the 17th district. The property is located on the east side of Atlanta Road, south of Cumberland Parkway, and on the west side of Winchester Parkway. Staff recommends approval of the variance, subject to sewer comments, traffic comments, uh, as shown on the rendering received by the Zoning Division on September 10, 2015, and lighting to be environmentally sensitive for the gates at Old Ivy. Yes. Uh, let the record show the applicant is here. There is no one opposed. We have one question, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, do you have a question, Miss? Uh, uh, wait a minute. Come, come up to the microphone. We, we should have heard this case publicly. We, we we're, we're kind of piecemealing. Go ahead, Brian, it's the green line. Uh, all staff comments. He did. He said. He said yes, all, but all, it wasn't read. That way. All staff comments. Okay. Thank you. That's okay. That's, fine. That's okay. That's fine. Everybody got to get their TV time. Okay. Uh, now I don't have a motion yet. Let me uh, let me get a motion to approve motion this. Motion that we approve. One fifty-seven. One fifty-seven as presented. And a second. In favor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries for approval. Four to zero. Okay. Thank you. John, our last case is one fifty-three, I believe. Yes, sir. We're back on track. now. Okay, let's go to that. Variance case V-153, Rex D. Halton requests a variance to weigh the maximum allowable impervious surface from 35% to 56.14%. The weigh of the setback for an, an accessory structure over 650 square feet for an existing approximately 960 square foot frame bathhouse with overhang from required 100 feet to 18 feet adjacent to the southern property line. and. Uh, to 50 feet from the rear property line and to waive uh, the setback for an accessory structure over 650 square feet for a proposed approximately 1,400 square foot garage with overhang from required 100 feet to 6 feet adjacent to the northern property line and to uh, 65 feet from the rear property line in land lot 245 of the 20th <coughs> district. The property is located on the east side of Valley Reserve south of Mountain Reserve. Uh, is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V-153? Let the record show there's one person opposed. Okay. All those wishing to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in. All right, sir, for the purpose of the record, if you would, please give us your name. Uh, Ronnie Artis. Artis. Yes, Artis, A-R-D-I-S. Okay, sir, Artis if Houghton. you would, Mr. Artis, tell us what you want. Uh, Mr. Houghton would like to um, build a two-car garage and tear down the existing one-car garage. The existing one-car garage is like a foot off the property line, and he's moving the other garage over to six feet off the property line. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. exactly. Right now, the drainage that's coming down from there is going down into the back of that garage and eroding it, and um, there's mold and everything else that's going on in it. It needs to be completely replaced. And um, the house uh, is, in a, is on a, an extreme hill to start with. It's very difficult to get up to the property. Uh, to park up there is difficult, um, and as 
Mr. Gunter will attest, it's quite a haul to get up there, and so there's no place to go anywhere. So years ago, it's been like probably 12 or 14 years ago, he had permission to put um, a uh, parking area that's there, that's in the midsection. And that's what's part of the impervious surface that we're talking about. Um, and then about nine years ago, he did the pool house, which was permitted and put into place that it's existing now, which they're uh, wanting a variance for the uh, setback on. And there was a drive that went around up to the pool house. Um, Mr. Uh, Houghton also wants to, when he is installing this uh, garage, he's going to take the existing driveway out that's in front of the garages and replace that area with a pervious, um, like a paver, uh, that, that would take up some of that percentage that's included in it. Um, but as far as uh, their covenants, they don't allow them to park on the street. They don't allow them to leave their vehicles out. And he is just down to two garages, and it's very difficult to even come out of those garages. You almost have to back down the driveway backwards to get out of there if you have a larger vehicle. So that allows him to have a little bit more room up there in order to get a vehicle out, turn, and come back down safely. Um, they've got their children have grown up now, and the people in the house have grown up, so other people have vehicles, and there's no place to uh, put a vehicle inside of a place uh, other than the two garages they have and the one that he needs to remove and expand into two. Um, so that's basically what he was asking for. Nothing that I can think he of. He said you had permission on the parking. Who gave you permission to do the parking deck? Uh, I mean, he, he had said he had put that in quite a while back, and that was done, I think, by the ARC of the, of the subdivision, okay. I believe. And the garage that he is asking to put up, he had permission to put that in, I think, about three years ago or so uh, by the ARC of the subdivision. And, yeah, Homeowners Association. Homeowners Association, okay. right. Their, their architectural right. review committee. Okay. And um, because of things that happened in their family, uh, a death and other things that occurred, uh, they put that on hold, but they're going to ask to do it again. But they have to get this variance first before they go and ask the ARC to start that process. All right, anything else you want to tell us? Uh, okay, sir, if you would have a seat and we'll, okay. have, we'll hear from the opposition. And again, oh, sir, if you would, give us your name. Uh, John O'Hara, uh, and I'm at 1361 Valley Reserve, which is two doors down from that residence. Okay. I don't know if we'll need that. Actually, that that over overview, if, if you can pull it down a little bit, you might be able. I might be able to use that. But this is some pictures of the of the, the property as well. Um, speaking, I'm speaking in, uh, just as a neighbor in, in opposition to that. I'm not on the uh, the reserve board, uh, or on the ARC. My wife is on the ARC, which is the architectural review. Would you identify review. what the ARC is? Architectural review committee. committee for the homeowners association. For the homeowners association, so a Thank subcommittee. Uh, what you're looking at there is, uh, I guess, really the, there's twofold. One is I, I'm not aware that uh, these. I'm a little confused. The HOA doesn't have, and the homeowners association doesn't have the authority to override building setbacks okay, uh, no. by the county. And so therefore, I'm a little confused here in that uh, these structures get so close to the property line already. So they seem to be in violation of the building setbacks and they're setting there right now. Uh, and then secondly to that is uh, uh, what he's done is paved a, a, a large portion of the lot up that way. I will admit it's a, 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 a very tight lot up at that end because you are up on a high rise there. Uh, but the difficulty is it's just gotten overbilled. Uh, and, and my concern with that was is that the county sort of does these building setbacks for a purpose. Uh, one of them is from a safety standpoint, fire safety. And I know that uh, you all do, uh, do variances uh, uh, and waive some of those restrictions. But it's just gotten to where this is getting built out to where it's, it's lot line to lot line almost. And then he's paved all the other areas. If you kind of go through this, uh, can you just click through it or how can yeah, you click through it? Up. Okay, good. Uh, you were looking at the one just prior to that, you were sort of looking up the hill at the heart. Uh, that's just looking up as you go. It is a steep drive, as he's talked about earlier, 
go to the next one. That's the front. I, I don't know, uh, though I was not on this, that the homeowners would approve that to be paved, but that was paved uh, out in the front area as extra parking. Uh, this is just the, the main uh, garage area that as you get up to the top of that hill, click the next one. Uh, as you're looking down, this is on the north side of the property adjacent. You can see to the right is the neighbor uh, and to the left is Mr. Houghton's uh, uh, structure and the property line. I'm probably standing pretty close to the property line. It sounds like what he's requesting is actually going to tear that structure down and actually pull it a little bit away from the property line on that side. His architectural, in terms of him meeting that, he builds it to look like the rest of the house, so I, I, I'm not in objection to his architecture. Uh, but it's just that he's right, I think he's already over those, those setbacks that he has in there. Click the next one. This is from the rear, which is a different topic. Uh, we've got a buffer zone there, a 50-foot buffer zone with the new subdivision called the Heritage, which uh, is right there. And uh, that I think he's uh, uh, pulled that fence back to where it's, it is on his property. He has the right to do that. The difficulty I had there was is that uh, that fence was never run through the HOA uh, ARC and is in violation of the... Uh, we don't allow uh, that type of offense in the ARC or with the, uh, the Homeowners Association. Next one. Just another shot of that. Uh, that walkway is in that buffer, which really the buffer is an area you're supposed to under, is not supposed to disturb those buffers. Next. Uh, next. Uh, this is looking from the north side neighbor's driveway at that garage that he's trying to move and pull around. And, and literally, uh, it's just the property line is right there about where those bushes are. I don't know exactly where that is, but it's right up against that. Next one. Uh, that's just another uh, His He's got three garages right now. And uh, what he's wanting to do is, I think, tear that one down, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm right, tear that one down and actually move it to some degree and create two car garage there. Uh, so it's, it's not an architectural issue as much as it is just, he has just overbuilt this at the top of the line and uh, at the top of the wall. This, this is more paving to the, to the south of the property line. So if you look at the south side, when he built the bath, that's the bathhouse, he paved <laughs> all that up to it. And if you're looking at the, uh, the property line to that, those, those uh, uh, I think Leland's to the right on the picture is of right about close to where the property line is on it. And so he has paved it on that side as well. So the paving we talked about earlier that he's requesting for a variance waiver on is uh, he's just pretty well paved all that up there. Right. Uh, and that, that just, it's just getting a little bit out of hand, I guess. That's about the only thing I've got, really. All right, Mr. Harrow. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Anybody else wish to speak in opposition to case 153? <coughs> Hearing and not seeing anybody. It's back to the board for discussion. That's our, everybody has a 10 minute period at the beginning and that's how it all gets out then. So at this time, I'm gonna turn the program over to Mr. Skip Gunther who represents the district. And Mr. Gunther, if you would lead us in the questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, what I'd like to say is that this is, it's, it's close to an acre, the, uh, the overall parcel. It's in an R20 subdivision, uh, but it's close to an acre, nine tenths of an acre. Uh, and it is on a very steep hill. Uh, I, when I went to visit the property, I parked down on the road, and then I walked up the driveway to the uh, to, to the, kind of the knee of the driveway, just right next to the uh, the two garages garage doors going into the basement of the house, right to that point. And it was a struggle. Um, so I can fully understand the need to have additional parking that's at the house level or close to it. Uh, there's no question about that. And I have to say that in looking in the backyard, um, uh, you know, Ronnie Artis uh, took me through the backyard and showed me what was being planned. It's all been done in a very nice, tasteful, beautiful way. There's no question about it. The, the, uh, the bathhouse, the swimming pool, and the garage, the landscaping, it all looks very nice from inside. Uh, let me see if I can't unravel some of all this. Uh, we have an application for three variances. One has to do with the impervious surface. One has to do with the 
um, setback for the pool house on the southern side of the property, and the third has to do with the setback for the garage on the northern side of the property. And I guess all of this was prompted by uh, an application for a building request, uh, a building permit for uh, changing out that one car garage into a two car garage. Um, what I'd what I'd like to do is bring Mr. Artis back up first uh, for some questions, uh, and then uh, ha I'll have some questions for some other people. So if you could come back up, please, sir. The first question I have is the neighbor to the south, uh, Steve and Alice Barlow, uh, you've represented to me that they're okay with that pool house structure uh, being closer to the, uh, yes, the, uh, the edge of the property than um, uh, what code permits. And I'll note that from my understanding, that pool house was permitted. Uh, it was permitted for some 630 square feet. It was actually built out at some 960 square feet or thereabouts. Is that correct? I was not aware of the I know you the probably permit process because I didn't do it, but yes, it was permitted. But for what I'm not, I was not aware for what. But I, but I, I'm under the impression that it was inspected by Cobb County. Correct. And, um, and so, if the southern property owner is okay with with that uh, variance, uh, I probably am too. Um, on the on the north side, uh, with the uh, the garage, it's my understanding that, I guess based on our testimony today from you, that um, the applicant, uh, Mr. Houghton, received uh, architectural review committee approval, but didn't have a building permit for that. And in the search of the records, uh, you know, I've not been able to determine that there was a building permit, and I think. Um, Mr. Peterson, you can confirm that, is that right? We did search our records, uh, Commissioner Gunther, and we could not locate a permit for that structure. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have one, it just means that we couldn't find it. It may have been uh, built more than 15 years ago. If it was, then that, that permit may not exist in our system. Well, when, when we look at the, thank you, when, when we look at the, uh, the GIS, and maybe we could well, we know that that was built since 2000. Yeah, I, um, I have no... When you look at the, uh, the GIS uh, yeah. picture, you know, the satellite picture going back to uh, 2000, it shows that there's no garage there. So um, that was built since Mr. Houghton moved in, bought and moved into the house in, I think, 1999 time frame, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, the... I want to confirm, however, that the neighbor to the north, and that's uh, David and Julia Harmon, and we saw pictures from their property from Mr. O'Hare. Um, Mr. O'Hare, I want to confirm that David and Julia Harmon, uh, or, or Hammer, I guess, uh, have agreed that this variance application is, from they their have. point of view, is not a problem. Yes, they have. They have agreed. So they've signed off on that. Yes. Okay, and that's, so that's a matter of the record that you're uh, presenting today. Uh, good. Okay. Um, I want to I want to talk about that gravel road that's in the uh, back of the property. You can see on this on the uh, the view that we're looking at now. You can actually see the outline of that gravel road, and we saw pictures of that from Mr. O'Hara. Um, and I back I've been back there and I've actually visited that. Um, my understanding, my impression is that uh, Mr. Houghton. Uh, Somewhere early on in the ownership of this property, built that road. Uh, it's a gravel road around the back of the property and actually enclosed it with a fence. Um, and actually uh, installed some trees in what is now the 50-foot undisturbed buffer for the the neighboring uh, heritage at um, Kennesaw Mountain subdivision. Um, and he installed some trees in there, and he also installed an irrigation system as part of the uh, when, when the owners at 1402 Kings Park uh, Drive, which is the house immediately behind the property we're talking about, when they went to closing in March, uh, the fence was on their property, and, and so Mr. Houghton uh, had to move that fence before they could take uh, ownership of the property. And so he moved that fence as recently as last March. Is correct. that correct? That's correct. Okay, but he's left the gravel path 
and roadway in there, and actually he's left a lot of debris in that northeast corner of the property also. I'm not sure if that's on his property or on the neighbor's property, but there's a bunch of debris from, you know, old fencing that's, that's up there. That's on his property. Yeah, okay. Um, I find it um, difficult to accept, I guess, that the homeowners association that uh, Mr. Houghton is part of made apparently a strong case back when the heritage uh, subdivision was being zoned. They made a strong enough case that they wanted to buffer there that they, they were able to successfully cause a 50-foot undisturbed buffer to be installed around the edge of all those, those homes. Yet Mr. Houghton felt that it was okay for him to build a road through that. I, I just find that okay. hard to accept. Can I explain? Because I, I asked yes. him about that myself. <laughs> okay, good. I'd like to hear an explanation of okay. that. The previous owner, that they've been through, uh, I think, three developers on that property back there. And the one before this, um, he had told Mr. Houghton that those rocks that you see back there, Mr. Houghton didn't put them there. If you go along that bankway, you'll see rocks piled up in other areas. Right. And those are from the settlers going back probably 100 years, and they've been back there. And he talked to that developer, and he said, you know, it was okay to put some gravel down there or whatever. This previous developer gave him the permission to just do that and just kind okay. of make it to beautify it. That used to be a 100-foot buffer, and they backed it up to 50-foot. And he did go over. When he did, he circled that around, circled it on that, and did not realize he went over the back side of that. Then I went and got a... Um, uh, a survey for it and I said look here's the line you've got to and th the builder from over there the guy that was the uh, superintendent came over and I talked with him about it and I turned around and I said look we're gonna put it right here along this line and set it inside the line as far as the gravel is concerned it, if it's a problem at this point Mr. Houghton said he'll take the gravel up that's not a problem but it was put down way back before <clears throat> anything was built back there and he had talked to the developer that was there in the beginning about this before he ever did it. The developer also told him, says, if you want to plant trees back here and stuff, as long as they are within keeping of what okay. is there naturally, do so. And Good. that's why he did. Good. I, <clears throat> I don't think our board has any jurisdiction over what he, we can't direct him to do anything with that <laughs> I property. But, but this is just what I, I was. I think it would be a nice gesture for him to get together with his neighbors, the, uh, the Arnolds, who are directly, they're the ones where that little pathway is, and just work out something that's mutually agreeable with them. Uh, to bring that back to some you know, more natural state. My concern is when I look at that, I see that there's a gate on Mr. Houghton's property on either end of that little arc, which leads me to believe that in his fence, yes. which leads me to believe that he would like to continue to have some kind of access to that little, pave, that little uh, uh, road that's right, on, right in through there. And... You know, if it goes away, he's not going to need those two gates. Well, let me explain. The reason he put those gates in there was to get from one point of his property to the other if he needed to, to come around the backside because that's a flat area. If right. you step in front of that fence, you're stepping directly into large trees and into a bank that's going down just like right, this. Right, but he doesn't own that property anymore. I, so. I understand. But so that's, he doesn't need the gates anymore, right? So, Unless he has permission of that homeowner the from the homeowner, to correct. use that, get those gates. Yeah, okay. Just wanted to get that into uh, the record. Um, the driveway and parking lot to the front of the property, um, all of that, uh, you, test, you just told us a few minutes ago that that was approved by the Architectural Review Committee. Um, and I, my understanding is that uh, there's no building permit required, Mr. Peterson, to put in a driveway or a parking lot on a property. So there was no building permit required, but part of this application is to look at uh, increasing the impervious space of this property. And I would just note that when Mr. Houghton applied for his building permit for the pool house in, I think, 2008 or thereabouts. Was, uh, he told me 2007, but that's pretty close. That's somewhere yeah. in that range. Um, I've actually seen a document that he signed indicating he understood that he was restricted to a maximum 35% impervious space on his property. And I think he signed a second document later 
Uh, I'm not sure that maybe Mr. Peterson, you could explain what that second document was, but both of them attested to his understanding of 35 percent requirement. Yeah, and there were two documents, Commissioner Gunther. Uh, one was for the pool house, and the other one may have been for the pool or right. or a repermit of the pool house. But there was two of them in the file. Okay, so back in in uh, 2007, 2008 time frame, right. he was aware there was a 35 percent uh, requirement. This the 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 reason for this application is is to change out that garage from a one car garage to a two car garage <clears throat> that would further aggravate the impervious uh surface uh situation by just the footprint of two cars instead of one in the in the in, you know the size of the garage right so i'm i'm uh, thinking that um you know We've, we've got to be very careful with the spectator. I, I want to go back to my questions. Um, and I think I've covered all my questions for you, um, Mr. Artis. Uh, I, want to, I want to bring up, um, I want to just ask John Peterson a couple of questions. Um, we talked about the, uh, the record showing the applicant signed the two documents, uh, indicating the acknowledge, knowledge and acknowledged, uh, understanding the 35% impervious surface requirement um, and the county did permit and inspect the bathhouse structure adjacent to the southern property line. Is that correct? Well, the county did permit a 630 square foot bathhouse, and they did inspect it. I'm not sure at what point they put the overhang on it to make it bigger, but what was permitted was 630 square feet. Okay, but I, it's my my impression is the overhang is probably. Um, away from the property line towards the pool. There's a, there's a, yes. um, uh, just a, just a, 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 a roof without walls. That's right there. And, and it's an outdoor fireplace and, and seating area. For yeah, outdoor use. seating. Okay, good. And seating area. That so that's that doesn't have anything to do with the. Uh, it doesn't make the. The. Uh, setback doesn't aggravate the setback situation. Okay, Dave Braden, I'd like to bring you up just to talk about stormwater management and what we can do about all of this impervious uh, space that's right here. Um, basically, you know, my question to you is, what are the options available to uh, the applicant to mitigate the problem? Okay, again, Dave Braden with the Stormwater Management Division. Um, you know, we deal with these almost every month. Um, but they're usually on the order of five, 600, or maybe 1,000 square feet where we're dealing with it. And um, with this one, we're looking at probably a little over 8,500 square feet of impervious coverage over and above the zoning limit. And that's, that's quite a bit. That's something that you couldn't do with what we typically do with as a dry well or some infil infiltration system. You'd be putting the whole front yard in an infiltrator. So it'd be more the size of an above ground detention pond for that much for that much impervious. So um, I think we talked about this in the work session. It's it's really a matter of, of trying to figure out what they can live with removing and or replacing with, I mean, they already mentioned a portion with pervious pavers, but um, how much of it you want to replace with pervious pavers to get down to, to something where you could put an infiltration system or something to offset what's remaining, but that's going to have to be up to them and their and their landscaper or their designer, whoever would be doing that for them. Okay. Okay, thank you. Well, um, well, wait a minute. Is there any other questions for Mr. Braden while he's here? I don't know. I have this one, David. If he took out that parking area, I mean, would he have to take the whole parking area out in order to accomplish that feat? No, that parking area is maybe 500 square feet. Then what are you going to do with the other 8,000? So, uh, well, I, <laughs> so to get to 8,000, yeah. if he took out all the uh, driveway and all the parking and put pavers in would that accomplish it I don't know like I said I don't have enough information to do it, it to would, do it, it but but that but that would yeah. be an option is that correct? We, you get it you, you would get a pervious credit for for that instead of having it count 100% take out history. all the concrete completely and put right. put pavers in. Yeah. okay any other questions for thank you Mr. Brayton yeah okay, skip. <clears throat> okay so I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm very close to, uh, you know, knowing what I'd like to do with respect to a, uh, a motion. 
Um, but I'd like to have some discussion about that, particularly that um, garage to the north. Uh, when, I, when I look at the bathhouse to the south, uh, I don't have any particular heartburn with respect to granting the, um, the variance there. Uh, when I look at the garage to the north, um, I'm leaning in the direction of, of granting a variance for the existing structure only with the belief, well, with the expectation that the applicant would go, is, is going to go back, well, further, I, I want to deny the, uh, the impervious service uh, uh, application variance. And so I, would believe, I believe the applicant would go back and re-engineer a solution for this entire property that would then conclude whether it's feasible or not to have a two-car garage or just a one-car garage or maybe no garage right there in that particular location. And so uh, I'm, I'm leaning in the direction of, of approving uh, the current setbacks for the existing structure only for that garage, but not for a new garage at this point. And I'd like some discussion on that. Ms. Williams. Um. I think given that he's over his impervious surface so much and he's he's attempted to jam in everything right there, um, I think I'd be more inclined to deny that. He said he's going to tear it down because of drainage problems and not let him build another structure in that place just to get rid of that structure, period. Um, the other thing is that he was permitted for 600 and something square feet and he ended up with, what, 900? 960. 960. He needs to, um, whatever he did in there, he needs to bring that down to whatever was permitted. 630. Um, 630. <laughs> and then he's going to have, then we'd have to have a new site plan to tell us how much over here where that garage was, how much uh, less impervious surface. But he's got so much impervious surface that he's already violated. So I would say no on the carport. Only because of these other violations. Okay. I mean, it seems funny to me that we would grant a new garage knowing that he is 56.14% over. Right. What, 20, 22%? Christy? Um, I agree with Ms. Williams' comments, and I wanted to ask Mr. Peterson or maybe confirm the setbacks, if the garage were attached. The setback would need to be 10 feet. Is that right? Correct. Okay, so that, you know, if everything else could be solved and the impervious issue could be solved, 10 feet is, is the least um, amount that I would consider. I think when you have an acre, there, I don't see a hardship. Why, why do you need to go six feet to the property line when you've got an acre of property? And, and that tells me that he's overbuilt. And looking at the aerials, it's the only house on that street that has overbuilt to this degree. Um, it's also the only one with that kind of paving. Um, I just think it's too much, but I, I think if they have a chance to go back and look at the impervious and some solutions for that, and then maybe rethink the garage, 10 feet is, is the closest that I'd be willing to support. I actually wouldn't mind holding it. I wouldn't mind holding it to see come up with a plan to attach it on that end if it can be attached. Maybe they want to. And if they could do that, that would solve one problem right there. <clears throat> Maybe we'll bring the starters back. Well, and I do think, I mean, this this needs to be reworked. It's okay. not just, okay, we want to do this, so well, my neighbors are okay, issues. and I'm going to do what I want. This is a lot. Right. It's already a lot. Skip, do we have all the signatures from all the neighbors? How about the north neighbor? Uh, we have a signature on those folks. John said we, we, we have testimony that we do, and John says we do. we do. Yes. So we got all three signatures. No, we have signatures from the, the one from south. the north and the one from the south. Okay. The uh, the two neighbors to the uh, to the east. Uh, I don't believe you have their signatures. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that bothers me a little bit too. I, I know we, it's not in for discussion, but just to go in that buffer and do what he did in the buffer, well, but it's not right. for discussion. I'm just saying that it seems like a lot has happened on well, this, this I, track of land. Let, let me, I, I would be happy to uh, to hold this and allow the applicant a chance to rework this to address all of these issues. Let uh, me. Can we bring Mr. Artis back? 
Yeah, and, and as he's coming up, uh, let me just say this, the, it, what Ms. Williams said, we zoned this property. I remember zoning this. There was a great deal of discussion in the, uh, in the non-disturbed buffer. And to arbitrarily just go into that buffer and do whatever you want, I, I just, uh, that, does not, too, that does bother me because we, that was a hard-fought battle, uh, and that was a long, hearty discussion. I do see that Mr. O'Connor is oh, back here. and wants to oh, make here. a comment, but that's going to leave that up to Mr. Uh, yeah. uh, Gunther. So it's back to Mr. Gunther. All right, well, I just, I just want to get your, your reaction. If we were to hold this, we've heard it, so if we were to hold it, uh, and give you a chance to uh, go back and, and work with the owner to address all of these issues. Um, would you be amenable to that? Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, that's all I wanted to hear. Okay. And, and yeah, let's, let's bring Mr. O'Hara back. Yes. Mr. O'Hara, please come on back up. I just to make you have to come you back, have to come back up. Go way beyond what we... You're way beyond what we our concern was, but by doing what you're doing, I think that addressed it. The only thing I want to do and just include to it is include the homeowner association. They have an ARC. When you get these this kind of approval process, just include them uh, because they're trying to do the same thing y'all are doing and protecting it. And I think they've got a voice at least saying he's yeah. Rex has done a good job though with trying to stay architecturally in line with it. I just think we ought to keep them in the loop. But 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 remember this: the county does not get involved in covenants at all. Agreed. Then so so we we don't have a say so there. We encourage homeowners to work together That's fine. under the HOAs, but we we can't get involved in that at all. That's fine. Back, Mr. Okay. Gunther. All right, uh, I'm ready to make a motion. Let's do it. Make a motion. We hold this until days. our would it be 30 days until our next meeting in December? That's correct. Yeah, and that's enough time for you to rework the problem. Okay, I, I make a motion that we hold this for 30 days. And second by Miss Williams. No other discussion. Call for the vote. All in favor, signify aye. by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries for approval four to zero. Okay, John. What else? That concludes our business with you for today. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just uh, get the approval of these minutes from the November 9th meeting and our October the 26th meeting. I need a motion of those. Oh. As presented. And second, Mr. Uh, Gunther. All in favor, signify by saying aye, aye. Any opposed? Okay, that proves four to zero. Ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, Veterans Day. Uh, uh, be kind to your veteran, and Thanksgiving is coming up. And Thanksgiving is coming up, so have a happy Thanksgiving. Am I on a leash or what?